Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Scrubo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And we're gonna do the astrology of August 2020. And August promises to be a very, um, Um, a, a month when a lot of things get revealed. And we start the month with a opposition between Mercury and Pluto. We have Mercury in Cancer. Of course, Pluto is in Capricorn. Um, this is an awareness uh, around how you think and relate to power, okay? Your own power, your sense of empowerment. Um, the opposition is part of, is the halfway point in a synodic cycle between two planets. It is where the seed planted at the new phase or the new moon phase, when those two planets were conjoined together. That's when the seed is planted. And the period of time between that initial conjunction and the opposition is a time when things are growing beneath the surface. And so it takes nurturance, it takes action, it takes activity, it takes um, personal uh, energy to bring that to fruition, right? So the energy and the personal energy of uh, each one of us collectively, creating this now opposition of awareness. And um, Mercury is the planet of the mind. And uh, this month, Mercury is part of the Kabbalistic picture in that the vibrations stimulate a hode in the tree of life, which is associated with Mercury. So we know that these oppositions of Mercury to the planets in Capricorn are going to be very significant. In fact, we just had a uh, opposition to uh, Pluto, I mean, uh, to Jupiter at the end of July. And so we have the opposition and an opposition to Pallas. So we have an opposition to Pallas. We have an opposition to Jupiter. Today we get the opposition to Pluto. And then later, um, and it's next week or the next week, we get the opposition to Saturn. These oppositions give us a view into power. Now, Pluto in Capricorn um, is, Capricorn is the hierarchy and the people at the top have all the power and the people at the bottom are functionaries in that cycle of power, right? In that, in that structure of power. Everybody plays their part. And then in the hierarchy, there is the, the top, the sort of the cream, right? The elite. And, and Pluto, what Pluto does is Pluto unearths that which is rotten, that which needs healing, that which needs to be attended to. And we find actually what happened here in the United States is that Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, deposition, um, Gouffre's deposition on Ghislaine Maxwell and um, Epstein, um, the, the, um, the judge opened it up so people could see what is there. And what is there is the names of a lot of very, very powerful people. Uh, both men and women, but mostly men. And uh, there will be ramifications for that for all those people listed, right? Um, but that is an example of the opposition uh, where we get to think about and see, right? What it is that, uh, what it is, that, what, it, what Pluto in, in Capricorn is about. Not completely, but a, a part of it. And when we're dealing with Pluto, we often are dealing with uh, sexual issues, okay? But there is this sense of, you know, power that we, we cannot fight against, right? You know, you, that old expression, you can't fight City Hall, that kind of like, you know, some things are too big. And yet everything in its time um, comes down, right? Everything. Uh, I would say if not based in truth, um, but I think it, 
that's not true. I think that there are true things that come down and there are false things that come down. I think truth is, I think the truth opens up in front of us and the false, the false facades fall away. So it's not that truth isn't the thing that drives us, but the truth that we have at this moment may not be the truth that we have in the next moment or the next moment or the next moment. It's an, it's an evolution of truth as these facades uh, fall away. So we're gonna be experiencing that come August and we start the month right with that. So on the 2nd of August, we have the Sun square Uranus. This is a first quarter crisis in action square and so we have uranus and taurus we have the sun in leo people are upset because the the help i think at least in this country and i i apologize for continuously moving moving the the, the conversation to america i do it because it's a great example of the energy so here uh the $600 extra a month, uh, a week that people were getting in their unemployment has stopped. And so people, uh, and the moratorium on uh, evictions has stopped. And so we have um, people concerned for their safety and their money and their livelihoods. This is all Taurus Leo stuff. Um, and so people are going to take action. Now, on the third, we have a full moon. Now, this full moon happens right after that square of the sun to Uranus. So this full moon, we have uh, Uranus here uh, squaring the full moon axis. We have the moon at 11.45 of uh, Aquarius. We have the sun at 11.45 of Cancer. And then Uranus squaring that. As I said, full, uh, oppositions, which is what a full moon is, is something is um, something comes to light. Some some something manifests itself. When we're dealing with the sun and the moon, that synodic cycle starts with the new moon. We just had a new moon, right, in Cancer. This is that halfway point of that new moon at. What was it 29 degrees of cancer exactly opposite saturn at 29 degrees of cancer the new moon in itself had a powerful opposition which had which required us to look at where we're at in in, in very realistically now when the new when the full moon comes it's as if we really get hit with the reality of the situation that we find ourselves in the sun, which is often associated with the ruler, okay, um, is in Leo, the king. And the opposition is to the moon in Aquarius, um, the moon is the common people. And Aquarius is uh, working for the common good, equality for everybody. And so we have this stark contrast with this full moon. So the new moon said, where are we really at? And the full moon says, here we are, folks. And so we get a good view of the elite versus the people, right? And what's squaring all of that is Uranus in Taurus. Taurus is money, Uranus is rebelliousness. So this really sets up the whole month of August to be a both transformational and revolutionary and lest we forget evolutionary experience okay all right the other thing about this this is for the united states uh, this is for washington dc so this is how it's affected uh for washington dc we have here um uh mercury at 27 degrees of Capricorn, uh, exactly opposite Saturn, right? At 27, let's see, 38. So later in the day, on the same day as the full moon, this Saturn-Mercury opposition becomes exact. 
yesterday we had, uh, I mean, uh, on the first, we talked about the Mercury Pluto, and now we're at Mercury Saturn. Okay. So those in charge have nowhere to hide, quite frankly, with this energy. The other thing is that the uh, axis it, that's being activated is the 10th and the 4th houses, and those are the houses of security. In the 10th house, we have physical monetary security, and in the 4th house, we have emotional security. So this is a peak moment when people are feeling terribly insecure. And the ascendant, how we perhaps should uh, face this situation, is in Libra. It's about relating. It's about talking to one another. It's not about fighting. It's about, I think, what has to happen is the moon and Aquarius have to start talking to each other, both sides of the divide, as it were, because the people in charge know that divide and conquer is the way for them to hold their power. Once we start talking to each other, once we start uh, understanding one another, they lose their power. I think that's why it was so profound when police took the knee with protesters in certain places. I think it was, I think that was a profound statement because it, it started to bridge the divide. And once the divide is bridged, um, the people at the top definitely have something to worry about. All right. So if we look at the Sabian symbols associated with these two uh, degrees, the tw 12 degrees of Leo, where the sun is, and 12 degrees of Aquarius, where the moon is, um, that theme of the elite and the rest of us um, is seen in that, and which is always very interesting to me because the Sabian symbols were done um, psychically um, back in the, um, was it the twenties or the tens? I think, um, I forget actually, maybe it was later than that, but, um, so these are the symbols for 12 degrees of Leo, an evening party of adults on a lawn illumined by fancy lanterns, group relaxation in fashionable surroundings as an escape from work routine. And the keyword here, the sophistication in, op in opposition to the moon. In Aquarius, 12 degrees of Aquarius on a vast staircase stand people of different types graduated upward. Upward, excuse me, the keynote here is the necessity of recognizing differences of types and levels of development wherever human beings live and work together. And so this is an, an ability to understand that while we are all in this together, we are not all on the same level. And people have to experience what they have to experience um, at their level of consciousness. And so this is a collective evolution that we're going through. So we cannot necessarily expect others to come to the same place that we're at because we're not at the same place. We're in the same place and we're of the collective, but we're not on this, not everybody's on the same level. And so there's a part of us that feeling guilty about the suffering of others and, and in, oh goodness gracious, I don't even know if I wanna say this, but not feel, you know, feeling guilty about the suffering of others is a waste of time um, because it takes you out of your power and it takes them out of their power because they have to experience what they experience in the way they experience it to help them evolve. And so it doesn't mean that we can't help and it doesn't mean that we can't love them and hold the space for them. 
and ease the um, the birth process of evolution, because that's really what this is. We're going through a birth canal, and as any woman who has ever had a child, and I have not had a child in this lifetime, but I was there to see a child be born, and it hurts a lot, and it's bloody, and it's 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 messy. It's just messy, and yet what comes out of it is this beautiful, beautiful child. Um, with all the promise and newness, right? That's where we're going. That's why we suffer this together. As and 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 so we have to keep that in mind when we're looking at what's going to happen in August for us, because I think it's not going to be pretty, and it's going to be hard to to watch it happen. And so that's why it's required for us to look at things in a different perspective. Uh, the hanged man is the vibration for the month of August 2020. And, it, and it's about acceptance and surrender to what is. And so this surrendering process, and if we don't fight it, I think it, it'll be swifter. It'll, it'll, it's going with the flow. It's going with the flow. Okay, let's see. On the 5th of August, um, and let me see, I, I don't have the dates here, but I have to look on my calendar here. So the 5th of August is, oops, I was going to say, it's not a full moon on the 5th of August. It's a Wednesday. Um, and Venus is making a conjunction to the north node of the moon at 29 degrees of Gemini. Um, I want to talk about what that means, uh, but let's look at the Sabian symbol first. Uh, the Sabian symbol for 29 of Gemini, the first mockingbird of spring. The keynote is the creative exuberance of the human soul in response to basic life experiences. What is presented to us symbolically is the reaction of the individual who has become sensitive to many currents in his environment and who is able to externalize this welling up response as a gift to his society, spelling, uh, displaying virtuosity. Venus, this is really about facing the challenges that you face, that we all face with a song in our heart, as opposed to with wailing and and bemoaning. Um, this is an opportunity for all of us to really find our voice, to sing our song. Remember, um, the the uh, the hanged man connects Gabura. If you've watched my first video, um, Gabura, which is a, which is found in the throat chakra energetically, and so all of this is active. All of this is active. And so we all have our challenges. If we can, and, and singing, when I say singing through the challenges, is not um, ignoring them, but it's not holding on to the pain and, and really searching for the other side, for the gift in whatever experience that has been for you or, or is for a person and seeing that other side is is singing the song is 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 an expression of joy that i've learned the lesson from this and the pain gets eased and every time we heal something in ourselves especially when it's one of those really big deep things we actually heal our ancestors we heal the planet we heal we, that because the energy we create will potentiate and and come together with the same sort of vibration that vibration of love or joy or relief or whatever it is and so it's it's we're just giving birth to a new to a new us to a new world to a whole new thing and um you know this happens on different levels, but I would have to say that this time at 
at, at this time of our collective experience, this is even bigger than anything we've ever imagined, bigger than anything we've ever imagined. And what and that change also will help open us up to our own ability to create. Instead of thinking it, it's so difficult, uh, it's really about learning how to do it in alignment with your 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 heart, because when your heart is is activated, spirit is activated and spirit works through you when you are you know trudging along trudging along and i gotta do this i gotta do that i gotta do this i should have could have there's no way for spirit to come in to help so all right what's interesting about august 5th and venus making a junction to gemini uh, the North Node in Gemini, is that Venus just came out of a retrograde cycle, which was entirely in Gemini. And Venus in Gemini is the value of communication. It's the value of information. It's the value of the words of the feminine, the words of women, the story of women. And so she went to hell, you know, the path of Inanna where she just keeps shedding, shedding, shedding to the last thing that she sheds before she goes into the underworld is her skin. She hangs it up on a hook and then on the way out, she puts on a new skin, a new life, and then moves forward. That's what happened to Venus. And now she comes into a conjunction with the evolutionary edge of our consciousness of our of our conscious consciousness right this is a potent time and it is this is another indication that this is bigger than we've ever uh, experienced before and so because of that it requires us to really drill down on and and get everything else out of your head and drill down on that which you want to create as you sow so shall you reap the sun in leo is the most creative place for the sun to be we create our own reality truly and we focus with all our desire on what we want to see because we're not the only ones doing it. There are people who know this secret, who aren't doing it for good. And so it, we're being called up. We're being called up. I think this is becoming a little bit more than an astrology thing, but that's okay. Let's just go with it, okay? And here we have uh, Venus, just don't pay attention to what that says. Here we have Venus making the conjunction to the North Node. And this is for Washington, <clears throat> and it's in the ninth house. This is actually about talking to other countries, talking to, uh, you know, reaching out and asking for help and not being this like isolated person who, who won't accept help. One of the things that um, cancer has problems with uh, and, and the, um, the United States is a cancer country is receiving because they lose, they lose control. When you receive, when you say, thank you, you're vulnerable. You have gratitude in your heart that makes you vulnerable um, to the energy of wanting to hold on as tight as you can uh, because you're not sure you're going to survive. That's what cancer is. The crib is at the, the edge of the of the earth and the sea, the most nutrient rich but tumultuous area to live. You've got these these waves pounding on you, right? So, so it's it's an emotionally challenging place. There's a lot of emotion with cancer, and what cancer has to do is take it all in, figure out what it means. Like this is what I'm, oh, this is sad. This is glad. This is. 
you know, and feeling your emotions. As a cancer myself, um, it actually took me a really long time to know how I, f I felt. I knew how everybody else felt. Oh, yeah. But I did not know how I felt because I never thought to look. And uh, now I'm looking and uh, it, makes, uh, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. Okay, let's see what else is going on here. On the 7th of August, we have uh, Venus uh, moving into Cancer. And so finally, she moves from that very, the energy of uh, vacillation. You know, Venus, on a certain level, is not that comfortable, I don't think, in Gemini. Of course, my Venus is in Taurus, so I would think that. Um, but I, I think that it, it can be frenetic. It can be hard on the jangly on the nerves. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of, uh, and a lot of reviewing, a lot of thinking. We're thinking, we're thinking, right? Because we had the retrograde. And now it moves into cancer. And now we're, we're, from a, we're coming from a different place. We're coming from that cancer place, right? We're coming from that emotional place. So, and Venus and cancer, Venus is very earthy in her nature, actually very earthy and very airy, but in, in, in her earthy sense, she really does well in cancer. You know, love of family, uh, valuing family, valuing food, valuing comfort, va valuing somebody, you know, rubbing your head because you have a headache. I mean, some people can't get touched at this time because they're isolated. And there's no, you know, they experiencing this, you know, this level of isolation that those of us who are lucky enough to be with somebody uh, who, you know, you live with that can rub your head, <laughs> you know, um, you really value the connection, right? You really value the connection. And that's Venus. It's what we value. And the connection to family. And the family can be the family of man. You know, it's like all this time in our heads, we can talk ourselves into and out of all kinds of things that make absolutely no sense to the heart. But when Venus goes into cancer, that's what she's touching, right? She's touching that love of family, that love of community, that love that, that binds us all together. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, Venus is our essential needs, the manner in which we relate to self and others. Venus is our relationship to our resources, our resourcefulness, what and who we love. In this chart, the moon, the moon's ruling planet of Cancer is at two degrees of Aries. The Sabian symbol for two degrees of Aries is a comedian reveals human nature, the capacity to look objectively at oneself and others. And this is, so we have this cancer, right? Wanting to be safe, wanting to be home, wanting to be right, Venus and cancer. But the ruler of the, the ruling planet of cancer is the moon. We look to the moon to see how does this color it? And the moon is in Aries. So it's not necessarily being at home and you know all cozy and comfy and, and not wanting to come out because that's a very cancer thing especially with covid all the cancers are staying home you can believe it um but this imbues an energy of being willing to fight for those that you love being willing to fight for the family whether it's your personal family, your spiritual family, the family of man, the family of all the creatures, us and all the creatures that live on this earth. We're not the only consciousness here. So this is, we're, we're willing to go the distance here. And the people in power have to know um, that they're not going to win. 
progress is in the direction of the people. The Aquarian age is in the direction of the people. And the natural order of things, you cannot have this huge pointy thing without it coming down. I mean, you can't do it. it it's an extremity. And so we will find a middle ground. So even those people who had a lot in the old age may still have a lot in the new age. If it's important to you, you'll have it. The th question is, how much do you need? And what I think is happening is we're realizing that we need less. And as we need less, we use less, we pollute less, uh, we strive less, and we look around and we say, who is my neighbor? Who are these people around me? Who is my family? What is my husband saying to me? What is my child telling me in their actions? We have time to look within. It's going to be much better. It's going to be much, much better. And then the Sabian symbol for that two degrees of Aries, which incidentally is my husband's sun degree, a comedian reveals human nature. My husband is hysterical. He's hysterical. He's one of the funniest people I know. I keep telling him he should become a, you know, a stand-up comedian, but he's very shy. He's got a cancer ascendant. Um, but it's this ability to laugh at ourselves. It's like, yes, striving, but, but also having humor and, and, and realizing that we, you know, you know what laughter does? Laugh, I call it laughter is the ego buster. So if you know any Leos, the worst thing you can do to a Leo is laugh at them, is laugh at them. And so, what was the point? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, laughter. So they, 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 want, they take themselves so seriously. And you know, of course, the more, neg the more you go into the negative pole of that, they want to be like the all and the be all, right? And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like we watch here in the United States, the president, and I know this isn't true for everybody, but it's true for me. And a lot of people I know are like, this is ridiculous. No, <laughs> Nighttime, um, you know, all the nighttime shows, uh, The Late Show and, and, and Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyers and all those guys, like, it's, it's like they're saying it. <laughs> we're, we're telling this is, this is crazy. Why are we taking ourselves so seriously? And why are we going in that direction where we're all by ourselves? I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I, it's me, me, me. Then you get to the end of that and you're totally isolated. Who wants that? Nobody. Nobody wants that. And probably most of all who doesn't want that is Trump. Why you all try so hard to be superhuman in his mind, not in not in actuality. It's this is his mind. And his and his Kabbalah, his um, his wound is 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 in in here and his ability to see in his ability to have empathy. And, it's, and it was blocked according to his numerology by the way his father treated him and probably his brother. I think Donald Trump was a very sensitive child and he saw what happened to his brother and he had an instinct to want to live. Um, and, that, and that's intense. And so, so he has a really very instinctual to live. He'll do anything not to die. And what, you know, die, lose, it probably means the same thing on some level to him. Um, the, you know, the, maybe the only good thing, or when I say good thing, maybe a way out of that is the fact that he's a Gemini and that he doesn't have to get to the point where everything completely breaks. And he, he, he just, switches and goes in the other direction. And, you know, maybe that's why we have him in the position we do because it's, 
it's a less, it's easier to switch. This is like you have to put less pressure on the levers somehow. I don't know what that means. Okay, so let's go. Oh, this is gonna be a long one, isn't it? I don't know how long I've been talking. Oh dear, I might have to separate this. All right, let's keep going. And here we have Venus's ingress into Cancer, and there's the moon there. Um, and it's and this is for uh, Washington. It is in the house of the military. Um, so there might something may come up with the military, um, where they refuse an order, something like that. I don't know. Let's see. Week two. All right. So uh, week two is probably the most nerve jangling, I think, of all the weeks in um, in April when I was doing it because I go through the week, you know, and I write down the highlights and my my thoughts on it. And uh, as I was doing this week, I was like, I felt like I was I was gritting my teeth. So let's see why. because I can't remember why. I just remember what it felt like. All right, so uh, on the 10th of August, so week two goes August 9th to August 15th. Incidentally, August 9th, it's a Sunday, it's going to be my mother's 100th birthday. She's going to, she's made it to 100, hopefully, a couple more days. I mean, she's okay, so I don't expect her to go, <laughs> but you know, I just... You know, it's it's a thing. But she's got four planets in Leo. So if anybody's going to want to take it to the end, it's going to be her. God bless her. She's got a strong heart. Nothing wrong with her. Nothing. Except that she's, her mobility. She doesn't have mobility. So we have to move her around and lift her up and stuff like that. It's very hard. Um, but her heart is strong. Like whenever she says to me, I'm, I, I don't feel good. A lot of times she'll say it to me because I haven't been paying attention to her. So I have to, you know, I try to pay attention, but, you know, it's hard because I'm also working, you know, and, and, and stuff. And, um, yeah, she, um, yeah, they, they need, they need that love. The Leos. I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, this is going to be a bugger of a week. On the 10th of August, Mercury squares Uranus in Leo and Taurus. Now, Uranus is the planet associated with the higher mind, and Mercury is the planet associated with the lower mind. And the higher mind and the lower mind are kind of at odds with each other. It's like the higher mind has to give us a little kick in the butt uh, so that we go in the right direction, that we go in the right direction. So. It's almost like spirit is in charge anyway, <laughs> but really in charge. <laughs> so it is about sort of going with the flow of the energy. Don't impede the energy, be a conduit. And in order to be a conduit, you have to really focus on the internal stuff. So that's really what um, August is gonna be about. All right. Um, So this can be kind of a nerve jangling time. Mercury and Uranus, and Uranus is the brain, and Mercury is the nervous system. And they're at cross purposes with each other. It's like the brain wants to do one thing and the body wants to do something else. And, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how to align that, how to agree upon that. On the 11th, the sun makes an inconjunct to Jupiter. And then on the 12th, the sun makes an inconjunct to Neptune. So, so we have to, and we just came off a, a, a trine between Jupiter and Neptune, 300 degree. This is a, a, not a trine, a sextile. This is when the information uh, can get out. This is when there's the ease of information for, for the energy to get out, for change, for progressive change, for more kindness to each other, like that energy, more collective. Let's go back to the, to the great cosmic sea where all is love. That's kind of the direction of that aspect. 
And now we have the sun and Mercury will cause us to maybe doubt the dream through this time. But it's not, it's okay to doubt the dream because as you doubt the dream, you will have a tendency to try to um, jimmy it or fix it or, or, or um, focus it down to the essential, right? And so really get down to what's important. Really get down to what it is that you want to bring forth in this new age. All right. On the 13th, oh goodness gracious, and it begins. <laughs> On the 13th of August, Mars makes a square to Pluto. Mars is in um, Aries. Pluto is in um, Capricorn. Hi guys, I'm sorry, I had to, I had to go do something. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk about, uh, on the 13th of August, I want to talk about this Mars square Pluto. This is actually the first of three, and these are first quarter crisis and action squares to Pluto. Um, this, this, this is the soul, right? Needing to take action to build foundations for its most recent desire, right? Uh, that desire was planted on three twenty on three thirteen no three twenty three two thousand and two at twenty five degrees of Capricorn. So this this energy of Pluto is um, connected to that twenty fifth degree of Capricorn which incidentally in the United States, and again, I apologize for bringing it back to the United States, is only two degrees or three degrees off, or about two degrees off um, the United States Pluto. So the United States Pluto return happening in 2022 and 2023, this is the, the, the starting salvo of of really change deep structural societal change we're moving and going to be moving in a new direction it has to happen and this these pluto these three sort of first quarter squares that we're going to have between pluto and mars because mars is what mars does is mars uh takes action so that the soul, Pluto, can experience whatever desire that it is that it, it wants to desire. That's what the soul is, the soul desires. So this is like three, like one, two, three. Of course, three is a charm, two. Uh, three is the, also two. Um, three is the trinity, right? So there's a lot of power in this. And so this is a very important aspect that's happening. And this is the first volley of this. It's going to happen again when Mars is retrograde. So that's like return volley. And then when Mars goes direct and does it again, that's when that, so it's like, it's like we want this and then they, sort of evaluate what it is that we want and then we we have to move in the direction of making both you know both sides more balanced so all right let's see on the 14th we have mercury making an inconjunct to jupiter and then on the 15th mercury is making an inconjunct to neptune this is exactly what happened um what was it with Pluto and Neptune? What just what, what just happened? Anyway, so there's this, there's these, I, it, there's these energies. What these energies feel like to me is like spirit is like 
stimulating and easing, stimulating and easing, uh, helping us. Spirit is very close. Spirit is very close this month. And they're, they're close so that they can help us. So utilize the energy of love between yourself and spirit. And whether that is your relationship to God or your relationship to Jesus, your relationship to the goddess, relationship to your family, whatever that is. Um, that's what is happening. Spirit is helping us along in whatever way it can easing the suffering. Um, on the 15th, we also have the sun in conjunct Pluto, crisis producing, where we would need emotional adjustments, letting go of attachment to how things are supposed to work out. Now, this is a very powerful aspect for uh, Donald Trump because this is his, this is his thing. I mean, he will not let go of whatever it is. The need to be, I don't know, the best, self-annihilating, I don't know, nihilistic. Um, and this is when there needs to, to be adjustments. There needs to be, a, the soul will adjust. The soul will adjust so that person do doesn't go there, doesn't, you know? And then on the same day, the 15th, Uranus goes retrograde. Uranus, as one of the transpersonal planets, when they change signs, I mean, when they change direction, it actually takes about seven days. And so it builds up a lot of power. And so Uranus stationing, either retrograde or direct, can create a explosion of some sort, a literal explosion. So this is, you know, this is something that we have to be aware of. And uh, just be aware. You can't walk around unconsciously and expect to be safe. You have to have your eyes open, right? You have to be aware of your surroundings. That's what they're trying to get us to do. Be aware of what's right in front of you. I am Mother Earth. Love me. I love you. <sighs> okay, that was a channel. <sighs> She's so very sad because it doesn't have to be that way. The thing that makes her sad is that it takes us away from love. Yeah, message from Mother Earth. And of course, Uranus is in Taurus, Mother Earth. Uh, and as I write here, often when Uranus stations, either retrograde or direct, we can often have unexpected events. Uranus is in the sign of the rebel, may see a decrease in rebelliousness as the ideas and ideals will be reviewed over the next several months. So I, th I feel like this Uranus going retrograde is like like that's the end of this sort of first push um of the protests i feel like there might be a, a as uranus goes retrograde there may be a decrease in that for whatever reason it could be a weather related reason like it just the weather somewhere is just like so awful and there's some sort of disaster, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's really, 
it really gives us an opportunity to look at what's been said on both sides and, you know, see what's, what's really needs to happen. You know what I'm saying? What, like, where really people are at, where people are at. Okay. Week three. I think this thing is going way too long. I'm so sorry. Um, week three, August 16th to the 27th. Ooh, a week of flow and new beginnings. I like this. So on the 18th, we have a new moon. Oh, yes, I love this new moon. On the 18th, we have a new moon at 27 degrees of Leo. The Sabian symbol for 27 degrees of Leo. So this is the new lunation, right? The new cycle begins, the new moon in Leo. And Leo is like super creative. Leo is following your heart. Leo is self-expressing. Leo is love. You know, love, the heart of the lion, right? We're going through the lion's gate. The luminescence of dawn in the eastern sky. The keynote says the exalting challenge of new opportunities at the threshold of a new cycle. While the rainbow marks the end of the crisis, each dawn indicates the real beginning of the new period of activity. In the, in the Bible symbolism, Noah plants his vineyard. He begins to teach the secret doctrine, which he inherited from those men Elohim, sons of God, who had not been sucked down in the whirlpools of materiality. Let that sink in, guys. Let that sink in. After the peak experience in which we touch our divine potentialities comes the struggle to to with everyday problems, but at first the state of inner exaltation remains within us. We are aglow with its promise. And so this is, uh, all right, I'm gonna say it. This could be when he has, he steps down. I, I'm, I said it and I'm, it's out there and I don't know if I'm gonna put it out. So <laughs> it's freaking me out a little, all right. So, um, this is a, um, this is a, a new beginning. This is new. This is a rebirth of sorts. And so, Again, I feel like the first push is, is starting to drive us in the direction um, that is best. I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future. Yeah, yeah, I'm optimistic. So um, let's see. So here we have the crisis and the blessings it has brought to us are relatively unusual events. Every day has its dawn, which we should meet with pure heart and clear mind. Alpha, dawn, and omega, the concluding peak experiences, are opposite yet the same. And the key word here is illumination. This is actually quite beautiful if you have an opportunity to, uh, to read this. You can get the saving symbols online, um, mindfire, mindfire.com. Or even if you just put Sabian symbols, mindfire comes up as one of the first places to look. Um, but you can look at all the symbols and they're very, very powerful. And they make so much sense that it's spooky it's spooky and i really feel like we can even just from this um sabian symbol say that a new dawn is upon us a new dawn is upon us i don't know what it's going i don't know what's it's going to be i i'm not even going to guess spirit is in charge um but i can feel that it's a, re a relief. It's like we'll take a deep breath for the first time. 
in a really, really long time. Yeah. All right. Powerful stuff, guys. Powerful stuff. Here's the new moon in Leo. As if that wasn't powerful enough, here's the new moon in Leo. It's here at 27 degrees of Leo. This is, um, I think, exactly in conjunct the United States Pluto. Um, it is conjunct Mercury at what was it, 28? Oh, sorry, I can't see. 29 degrees. Mercury is exactly opposite. Um, no, no, it's trine. Yeah, it's trine Saturn right there. So there is, there's this, this, the energy right now that I read here is that the government is willing to help people get where they need to go. It's going to be a big sigh of relief. It's going to be like, they're, we're not going to, we're not, they're not going to turn our back, their backs on us. They're not going to turn their backs on us. And, um, and then, then it changes and it shifts. It's like comes, the tide comes in and, and, the, and the cancer, the crab country gets fed and it's okay. You know what's interesting? Um, I think that the nature, the nature of America, being a Cancer, Sun, and Aquarius moon, is one of wanting to help, wanting to nurture the world, and because we came to the rescue of the world during World War II. Suddenly we became something else, the aggressor. And I think that um, that in a lot of ways goes against the innate nature of America. And so I think that all this unkindness and all this pain that we're inflicting upon each other in, in, you know, in ways that we know and in ways that we don't know um, is really, uh, it's, I, it's a way for us to get to the other side. It's a way for us to breathe and relax and trust and trust the mother trust that the mother is there yeah the goddess making herself known powerful stuff powerful stuff the other thing, okay, as if this is so, we have the the new, <laughs> we have this new moon, and it's actually trying Mars at at twenty five degrees of Mars. Now I didn't look to see what was at twenty five degrees of Mars. I think I have the book somewhere. I'll be right back. I think I'll be right back. Okay, so I, I had the book. So we have uh, Mars here in, um, in the 12th house, the house of spirit, right? Um, and then we have this trine, we have, the, we have a trine, the new moon and Mercury, right? So this is like, there's a flow between the mind and action, the mind and action. This is the power of intention. This is the power of thought. To bring forth what? So let me. What is this? What's twenty-five degrees of, of, of Aries? And this is what I mean about the Sabian symbols. It's freaky. The possibility for man to gain experience at two levels of being, the keynote, the revelation of new po potentialities, new gifts. We have, uh, we have a mess ahead of us. Um, but with a great mess comes great gifts. And 
innovation because people are working together instead of against each other um, is going to make huge leaps, huge leaps. It's just going to be, oh, it's wonderful. I haven't felt this optimistic in a long time. I'm glad I get to share it with you. I hope you don't mind. says, be open, be able and willing to shape your translucent mind in the form revealing spiritual fulfillment. And you will be able to experience life and power on inner and as well as outer planes. The implied message is one of faith. Man can only truly experience what he deeply believes he can experience. So. That's powerful, powerful, powerful energy. But of course, Mars is square, Saturn and Pluto. So this is not something that the powerful who want things to stay exactly the same um, are gonna block it with everything they have. But again, it's not gonna be enough it is not going to be enough. So it's not like we wake up and there's unicorns and rainbows. This is still a fight. This is still a fight. But this is a fight for evolution. Not revolution. Evolution. That's what this fight is. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Cool. All right. August 19th. Uh, Mercury. The planet of the mind moves into Virgo, loves Virgo. Virgo's ruling planet is Mercury. Mercury and Virgo, really practical minded, putting your head to the grindstone and figuring out how you're going to do it. How, what's the most efficient way of doing it, the best way to utilize and, and reserve, do your reserves and all that stuff. Virgo, really detail oriented. And the mind goes there. Uh, making necessary adjustments, improvement, self-improvement, and fixing what's broken. And there's a lot of stuff broken. And we need a lot of fixing. And we have the energy. We have the ability. It's to boost. And then, a couple of days later, the sun goes into Virgo. And then just puts the sun's energy into it, which is like the energy of life. So the next 30 days to work on fixing what is broken, seeing what works and what doesn't, trial and error, improvement, and mental adjustments. Mental adjustments. We're all going to have to make some big mental adjustments. It's okay. This is, this is um, supercharged evolution. Like this kind of evolution didn't happen like this before, like in with this force behind it. So we are going into a new experience, a new dimensional awareness. Actually, many of us already have have had that awareness for a long time. But you don't talk about it. You don't say it to people. You don't know how to explain it. You just know things. You know, you feel things. You see things coming. You feel the pain before it happens, you know. Um, yeah. We're moving into fixing. So I think we'll see at at this time, this third week, because that second week was really hard. The third week is we really are working together. We really are uh, moving into the efficient mind. And also Virgo is, is hospitals and healing. So there could be a surge where we have to put all our energy into the hospitals. And I don't know what that means because every place is different right? And every situation is different. Not everybody has this, you're not in the same state. They don't do it the same. They don't think the same. But um, 
Yeah. I feel like things are going to start to flow now in the right direction. So it looks like that second week of August is a real turning point. A real turning point. Wow. Okay, let's see. And again, I, I, you might say don't apologize, but I've never talked this long, ever. And it's just coming out, and I, I feel like I need to share it with you. It's a little different than what I usually do. It might freak some of you out, but if it's coming out, I have to express it, right? Okay. So the last week, are what I call week 4.5, because it's, you know, it's, it's a little longer than a week, is a week of action, awareness, and flow. This is August 23rd to August 31st. So action, awareness, and flow. Um, on the 24th, now I said, I said, when I say flow and all those nice words, uh, and the first aspect is uh, Mars square Saturn. This is where the, the speeding car meets the wall, right? That energy, that's the energy here. Right. Um, at 27 degrees of Aries Capricorn, this is a crisis in action. Taking uh, action to build foundations of seeds planted when these two planets conjoined, uh, conjoined, which occurred on March 31st of 2020 um, at one degree of Aries. And these were the uh, headlines for that day. Uh, New York Times headlines for autocrats and other corona and others coronavirus is a chance to grab even more power and democracy now the top headline um, the US coronavirus deaths top 13,000 uh, as three quarters of the population are told to stay at home and I think now we have 150 or more thousand and this was how long ago it was uh, March 31st that wasn't that long ago so we are moving through a really intense period of evolution really intense period of evolution and so what I feel will happen is that any residual things that are sort of holding you back from really expressing what you're here to do, really believing after all, these, all this time and all these centuries or millennium that we actually get to like go there, you know, just break through to higher levels of awareness. To, to higher consciousness. Yeah, waking up. So, sometimes it takes a little bit of a rap on the head before people wake up. We're getting wrapped on the head. That's why August is going to be really important. Stay lined up with your inner core. You almost have to not hear that stuff so you can access it. Some people can access it and still stay open. But, um, yeah. Change. The times they are changing. And then on the 25th, was that one day, right? Mercury trines Uranus. Remember how I said Uranus was the higher mind and Mercury was the lower mind? When Uranus trines Mercury in a trine of creative self expression, your higher self is speaking to you. There's a flow the lower mind in direct contact with the higher mind. And then also on the same day, 
Venus opposite Jupiter, 18 degrees of Cancer and Capricorn. Awareness of values and beliefs, especially in relationship to family. Again, Mother Nature, our family, the Mother Goddess, the energy of love and comfort and femin feminine softness. After all this time of hard, pokey, painful centuries. <sighs> wow. On the 27th, oh, this is great. So two days later, we have Venus, trine Neptune. This is creative self-expression directly from spirit. Venus is the planet of love. Neptune is the planet of compassion. This is, um, this is creative, self-expressive, directly from spirit. Could be delusional, could be illusional, could be too idealistic, or could be true, like, unconditional love. Coming down from heaven. We're going to need it. Um, and we're going to do it. On the 29th of August, we have a trine between Mercury and Jupiter. Um, another trine, creative self-expression. This is when uh, Mercury and Jupiter are social and personal planets. And this feels like the time when the very high vibrational energy things that are happening start to precipitate down into the collective. Like I feel like the people on the edge of who we're always seeking to know, to know, to know, um, are knowing and so there's again there's this wave of energy and 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 um like the like the voice like a vibration right that's just keeps creating August 30th, we have uh, Venus making an opposition to Pluto. And uh, this is awareness around relationships. This can be awareness around shared resources. This can be uh, awareness around who has what and what has who. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so this, there's tension here. There's been a lot up to this point, right? There's been all this flow. There's been a lot of very like cool energy, and now it's sort of like whoa, stop, stop, whoa, whoa, what, 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 right? Um, this to me feels like a distrust in happiness that most people have. They distrust it, so they don't let it in because maybe they don't feel they deserve it. I don't know. <sighs> okay, and uh, also <laughs> Mercury opposite to Neptune. And so Mercury is the truth. Neptune can be a lie. Um, or Mercury can be the lie because you can say something that's not true. And Neptune is 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 the truth the truth of unconditional love awareness around how we communicate our spirituality confusion and or ob objectivity yeah this here feels to me mercury opposite neptune which generally I don't know if you've ever felt like this to me before, but it feels like um, uh, 
I feel like this is a, a, a communication from spirit. Spirit is going to show us something. And it's Virgo Pisces, so it's going to, it's going to show us something about health. It's going to show us something about health. All right. And that's it, guys. Um, I know this took an awful long time. Uh, thank you so very much. I think I'm going to have to put this out in total because I don't know how to separate it. So um, sorry about that. <laughs> but this was uh, supposed to be the cabal, um, the astrology of of August, and it was. But I was just going to be like more technical and a little less like channeling stuff. So I channeled a lot of this stuff was channeled. So I, it's coming through me, not, not from me. So, um, so anyway, thank you for listening. If you're still here, thank you. You get a prize, I guess, and you stay to the end. <laughs> All right, guys, like, subscribe, love you, love you, love you. We are going to do this together. This is going to be an amazing experience, but we have to do it together. We have to remember that we can reach out to one another and support. Okay, guys, take care.